I'm here with Eric Cole of Mellanox at Red Hat Summit, and networking is, is a key underpinning of, of all computing, really. But software-defined storage obviously has some special challenges around networking. Could you talk about what some of those are? Yes, that's uh, very true. So uh, when you consider software-defined storage, uh, especially if you are about to deploy NVMe devices, you need to think about all the east-west traffic that is being created between the storage nodes. And if you do consider that, you have to start considering higher bandwidth uh, network. When I talk about higher bandwidth network, I mean everything that is higher than 10 gig uh, Ethernet, which is kind of the standard today in many of the data centers. So once you come to the conclusion that software-defined storage is what you want to do as an end customer and you understand that you are going to deploy NVMe devices, you need that transport layer that will be able to support it. So Mellanox is uh, the market leader when it comes to um, connectivity that is higher than 10 gig. We have 60 to 70 percent of the market share. It depends which day you check. <laughs> so. It's a natural partnership between uh, Mellanox and uh, Reddit on that side. We also work very well with all the uh, server OEMs, so you can actually source the equipment from any of the big names like Dell, EMC, and uh, HPE, IBM, Lenovo, whoever it is. So this is a, an, easy, an easy way to consume it. So, so what about software-defined storage requires more than 10 gigs? When it comes to software-defined storage, you have a lot of storage nodes, and they all transport data between them and share data. Uh, it depends on if you do RAID, erasure coding, uh, it means, or just a replication of the data. It means that each of the nodes sends also data to the other nodes. And that's on business as usual. When things start to go uh, badly, then you also need to think about recoveries. And you want to make sure that the recovery will not impact the business as usual for the applications that runs and use that storage and the data inside that storage. So that's really why uh, you need to go on, on higher uh, bandwidth uh, network uh, for those uh, deployments. So how do you know when, when you've got enough? That's, that's pretty easy. You can do sizing based on the number of NVMe devices that you have in each of the nodes. You kind of know what is the uh, bandwidth that each of those uh, NVMe, NVMe devices can give you. You also need to make sure that you understand that you either triple or sometimes less, but around triple the, uh, the bandwidth that you need for, from each of the nodes because think about the replication, think about the erasure coding, so you create even higher bandwidth than what the client really drives into the, uh, into the nodes. But based on the number of NVMe devices and understanding a bit the applications that you are going to serve, you can come up to the right conclusions whether you will need uh, 25, 50, or sometimes for a uh, very high density NVMe targets, uh, you might even consider 100 gig as the networking between those uh, storage nodes. That's pretty fast. That is pretty fast. <laughs> and again, it depends on how many NVMe devices you want to deploy. So uh, if you go with 24 NVMe devices, you most likely need 100 gig uh, connectivity. And does it really come down to the number of devices or does it uh, also depend on the type of workload that you're trying to do with those devices? So it, it's a good question and it definitely depends on the workload. But just by using and knowing that uh, your software-defined storage creates replications or erasure coding, you can realize how much extra bandwidth uh, each of the nodes will create on the other nodes. And you can do your sizing accordingly according to that. All right, well, thanks, Eric. Yeah, thank you very much.